A lot of people have been asking in my comment section, what about the RTX 4060, 4060 Ti? Do we have any information about that? And recently it's been mostly RTX 4090 and 4080 info, a little bit of 4070 info, because well, those are the GPUs we're expecting to see come first. Well, I do have some leaked information, but again, you're gonna have to approach this with some skepticism whether or not this is accurate, but let's dive into it. There is now some at least supposed early performance test results for the RTX 4060 Ti and RTX 4060. Now, let's dive into what we have here. So the source is a tweet at Qubit Leaks, and I can tell you right now that I do not know whether this particular leaker has any sort of established track record of accuracy. So I'm just gonna start right there with, this could all be completely made up. Someone could just randomly create a Twitter account called, you know, something or other leaks and just start tweeting some stuff and see if people start reporting on it. So to be clear, I'm covering this because people are, have been asking, do we have any kind of information? Well, here's some kind of information, whether it's good information or not. Uh, let's see. Well, first of all, um, the, uh, the, the leak here is about Time Spy Extreme Performance, and this is interesting because uh, the more well-known leaker, Copite, uh, has leaked supposed Time Spy Extreme scores for the RTX 4090, 4080, and 4070. Um, so this is at least going to give us some interesting comparisons with those other leaks from Copite. And we're seeing the 4060 Ti scoring an 8600 with an average clock of around 2600 and power draw in the 270 to 280 watt range. Now that's really high power draw, but I've gotta say that um, these are test boards and a lot of times I think test boards can be enabled with a higher possible power draw than what the um, actual shipping card would. And this just allows them to test a wide range of, of power draw, you know, levels, things like that. Um, and we're seeing the 4060 non-TI version reporting a Time Spy Extreme score of around 6,000 with average clock speeds over 2,700 and power draw in the 230 to 240 watt range. Now it's being reported, again, I'm getting this from WCCF Tech, but I guess um, this uh, leaker FCL at Qubit Leaks has also reported on the actual um, specifications of these cards. And I've got to say, uh, there's something that's standing out to me as a bit suspicious. I'm not saying this couldn't be right, but it's another reason why I'm going to be a little bit skeptical of this source. It's just that the RTX 4060 non-TI, according to this source, is reported as being on the 8106 GPU, which is fine. Um, <clears throat> but it's reporting 3,968 FP32 cores, which would go with 31 SMs. And the, I, I guess it's not impossible to have an odd number of SMs to my knowledge, but I think it's certainly more normal for these to be even numbers. Now it's, you can have certain amounts disabled or, or things like that. So, I mean, I guess this, this certainly could still be possible, could still be real. Uh, but coming out with an odd number of SMs seems odd to me. And again, I don't know the track record of this source. So that, that all comes out just a little bit weird to me overall. Now, I think what most of you guys care about, you, you can read into the exact specs that they're leaking here if you really want to, but I think where a lot of you guys would be interested in seeing, okay, those leaked Time Spy Extreme scores, assuming these are real, where does that actually put the performance? Um, so WCCF Tech handily has um, the leaked from Copite, uh, RTX 4090 and 4080 and 4070 scores here. Um, along with these new leaks of the 4060 Ti and the 4060, and then added in some, I guess, just, you know, available online results from the current generation of cards. So where does that actually put everything here? Let me zoom out a bit so we can see a little more of this all at the same time. Um, so this would place the 4060, I, I, what I would guess most people would consider disappointingly low. Um, if it's times by extreme score is around 6,000, 
that is slightly better than a 3060 Ti and worse than a 3070. Now, it's also important to note that times by extreme scores certainly aren't um, exactly going to be in line with actual gaming performance. It's a synthetic benchmark, so they don't always line up. And first of all, this is, I mean, just a rumor. It could be completely made up or wrong. <laughs> and then even if it is correct as of this date, you know, this is still pretty early on. Could things change? Um, all of that. But anyway, with all that in mind, the 4060 here, I think seems to be, well, I mean, if you compare it to its actual 3060 non-TI predecessor, it is a reasonable jump. The, the percentage jump there is similar to the percentage jump we saw going from like a 2060 to a 3060, if I'm remembering correctly. So it is a healthy bump, but I'm, I'm sure a lot of people were hoping for the 4060 to be better than a 3070. And that certainly does not look to be the case here if this leak is accurate. Now the 4060 Ti looks a lot more interesting and that's showing its performance actually, um, you know, closing in on an RTX 3080, although still below an RTX 3080. Um, and that kind of performance level would be really, 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 um, I think very solid if the price was right on the 4060 Ti. And that's the last thing I'm gonna say about that is I think what really matters here, if any of this is accurate, is how much will these cost? Because I don't think the the name you attach to something, whether you call it a 4060, a 4060 Ti, or call it a 4070, or call it a uh, just any sort of number, what really matters is uh, when does it come out and how much will it cost? <laughs> and how does it perform? So I'm more interested in how the price to performance changes. So, you know, a 4060 at, you know, this level of performance, I think is fine if the cost is low enough. And it seems like they're getting the VRAM numbers um, at least supposedly going to make a little bit more sense here. With the 4060 coming in at eight gigabytes and the 4060 Ti, I think coming in at 10 gigabytes. So we're not gonna have that weird situation where we had like the 3060 with 12 gigabytes and the 3070 with eight gigabytes. You know, this would actually scale up on VRAM uh, the way you would expect for the actual performance of these cards. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't, like I said, I don't know about the authenticity of this source, but that's what we know so far. Um, this is the, the best leak I can find on the 60 class from uh, NVIDIA. Now, we've got another leak here, but this time about CPU scores. This is the Ryzen 7700X and 7600X, and these are Cinebench R23 numbers, and these are coming from Graymon55, who I do recognize from previous uh, leaks, especially on AMD hardware. Um, so it is certainly possible that Graymon actually has some correct information here, and it's also certainly true that these CPUs are out in the wild and being reviewed. So um, I, I would have a lot of confidence um, that these could be ac fairly accurate results here, um, especially compared to that 4060 Ti information we were getting. Uh, now we're also getting um, some information that the reason why we're not seeing CPU Z tests for the Ryzen 7000 series is that it's having some issues actually finishing that test, which is not good to see. I'm hoping we, that doesn't imply eh, that we're going to be having any kind of um, compatibility issues or, or anything like that when this uh, series first gets out there. But we'll, we'll see what happens. Now, if we compare these results using eh, the table that Video Cards has put together over here, um, we see that, okay, the 7700X and 7600X, um, here, here's our leaked scores for single core and multi-core. Now, if we compare that to the 5000 series, this is a pretty healthy jump. Like if we compare the eight core 16 thread 5800X, single thread score of uh, 1620, against, um, you know, getting around 2000 on the uh, eight core 16 thread 7700X, you know, that's an over 20% gain, which is nice. Uh, you can probably hear my kids running around upstairs. I'm still a bit sick and isolating in the basement, <laughs> making my video. Anyway, uh, then I'll probably go take a nap. Anyway, um, but we're seeing the, um, like I said, an over 20% uh, performance gain here, uh, comparing like generation to generation on that and on the single thread, and that's pretty good. However, if you look at it compared to uh, Intel's 
12th uh, gen, we're kind of catching up, it looks like it, but then compared to the leaked test scores we've seen coming from the 13th gen, now, to be clear, we don't actually have the 13th gen officially out in the wild, but again, there's all sorts of engineering samples out there that have been uh, leaked, all sorts of test numbers here. It does, at least in this test, and according to these uh, leaks look like our Ryzen 7000 series will be falling a little bit behind, although fa fairly comparable in Cinebench R23 performance. And then in multi-core performance, it's going to be way behind. But that's primarily due to the efficiency cores um, that the 13th gen has. Um, because again, uh, Intel's been adding in all those efficiency cores, which help a lot with multi-threading performance. It'll be great for productivity, but don't do a lot for you in terms of gaming. So if you're looking for gaming performance, it looks like we might um, be a little bit behind, but keep in mind that this is Cinebench R23, not a gaming benchmark. So certain things that might be more like cache sensitive, something like that. In other words, we could see gaming performance gains be different, possibly better than what we're seeing here. So uh, uh, we still definitely want to wait on full reviews before we um, uh, completely, uh, you know, make our judgment call here. Now, um, this is kind of interesting. We're seeing the ARC A380 get tested in 50 games, not for relative performance, but for their compatibility, especially going back into some old games as well as new games. This is from PC Games Hardware and being reported by video cards here. And they said that they found the... Uh, compatibility to be better than they might have expected, given um, you know how new the uh, the Intel Arc GPUs actually are. But feel free to dive into my sources in the description if you want to take a closer look at all that. Now, Intel Arc certainly still has a lot of problems, as we can see reported in their new driver that just came out. They've fixed a number of issues, um, but still have um, a lot of known issues. <laughs> Um, so if you're thinking about getting an ARC GPU, just keep that in mind. There's certainly still a lot of issues out there. Now we are seeing reports that um, AMD and NVIDIA partners will have to be offering even more brutal pricing cuts in September, considering they, their current price cuts have not moved as much inventory as they would have liked. And then we're also seeing Valve confirming that we will see more versions of the Steam Deck in the future. Um, this will be a multi-generational product line, which is awesome. All right, I hope all of you guys have an excellent day, and I'm going to take a nap.